What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I am Allison, the host of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. This is my weekly podcast where I chat about all things knitting, sometimes spinning, sometimes very rarely crochet, but it does happen, and everything yarny I can get my hands on for the most part. This is episode 39. It is February 24th, I believe. It's the 23rd. February 23rd. It is a Saturday, almost lunchtime. Uh, I am waiting on this looming blizzard we're supposed to have, um, as if we don't have enough snow this year. Guys, I'm so over the snow. We are set to get another five to eight inches tonight um, with blizzard conditions. It is, I just stuck my hand outside when I pottied my dog a little while ago and it is like doing the freezing mist. So that means I will be hunkered down all weekend with my knitting and I will not be going anywhere um, because all of that's gonna freeze and then we're gonna get more snow dumped on top of it. So hooray, Nebraska. Um, I am from Lincoln, Nebraska. I've lived here the majority of my life, uh, moving here uh, in kindergarten age, I suppose. Uh, but we jumped around a bit before then uh, because of my dad's job. But So I've been dealing with Nebraska winters for a very long time, and I must say the older I get, the more over I get and the less patience I have for all of it. So hopefully it'll be done soon. Ugh. Anyway. I'm not going to sit and blab to you guys about the weather because I'm sure um, you guys don't care. <laughs> or if you're like me, you're completely over it as well and you're just wanting to live in your bubble of denial. I'm drinking my coffee out of a Starbucks You Are Here mug. I have been collecting these now for quite some time. Um, I'm getting quite the little collection going and this one was gifted to me from my really good friend Renee. Um, she sent it along in a package at the end of last year, kind of a birthday Christmas package. And I just, I love it so much. I've never been to New York. Um, I hope to get up there someday, but um, I'm really happy to be able to have this. And I love, I just love looking at all the things that they include on these and kind of seeing the important parts of what they decided to be inspired by when they were making these designs. So I love these mugs. Um, they're fantastic. If anyone is wanting to do swaps. Uh, Nebraska finally has their own You Are Here mug. We are finally cool enough to have our own. So uh, that is something that I can now offer if anyone is willing to do or wanting to do any swaps. So anyway, if that's something you guys are into, you can definitely get a hold of me and we can chat about it. Um, yeah, I love these. All right, guys, this is going to be quite a short episode this weekend. I don't have a lot to chat with you guys about, and that is only because I've been completely monogamous and just really buckling down on one project that I've been working on. Um, I will share that with you guys today because I've made a good amount of progress on it, surprisingly. Um, good amount for me. It might not be good for other people, but I am pretty proud with the progress I've made so far. Um, so I think I'm just going to jump right in. I don't have a lot of administrative things to share. We do have a Ravelry group if you're interested in joining and kind of seeing what the topics are over on Ravelry. Feel free to join in. We do, sorry, uh, I keep fiddling with my hair. I just recently, I just recently recut my bangs and I'm still trying to decide whether or not I like them. Uh, I am one of those people that tries and tries and tries and tries to grow their bangs out. They hit that length where you're like, oh, I just have to cut them off. But it's kind of this like, do I wait? Do I cut them? Do I wait? Do I cut them? And unfortunately, um, the cut them went out this time. So just cut them. Um, they looked really cute until I put my glasses on because unfortunately glasses plus bangs is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, anyway, this isn't a hair podcast either, but I just wanted to Apologize in advance if I keep fiddling with it. Um, if it becomes a problem, I will definitely pin them back. So as I've been a monogamous knitter, I've been really, really, really trying to just plow away on one project in particular, and that is my What the Fade Shawl by Andrea Maori. Uh, if you guys have watched the podcast previously, you will have already seen this, um, but I would definitely love to share it with you again. Um, I have, like I said, I've been completely just 100% committed to this project. There has been 
itchings of cast on itis. I can feel it. I can feel the urge creeping in, but I am trying to tamper that down so I can just continue working on this. I really want to have it done. Um, I am going to be vending at the Mid Plains Fiber Fair in York, Nebraska at the end of April. Um, so that's really exciting for me. This will be a first time vending there, a uh, second time as a just spectator or visitor of the fair. Um, the first time I went was really great and they had some awesome booths in the marketplace. And so now I'm really excited to be a part of that. Um, so I have a personal goal to get this What the Fade done so I can wear it uh, there that weekend. That would be super awesome. So uh, if you guys are unfamiliar, the What the Fade is a giant triangular shawl where it starts with brioche and you fade through brioche and into, make sure, yep, this is the right side. You fade through brioche into a garter where you continue fading and you just, you go and you go and you go and this thing turns out massive. So you will have seen this before, so I'll quickly share the brioche sections again because I am officially into the garter, but it starts here at the top where you do two color brioche and then you slowly start fading into your next two colors of brioche and then you fade again into your last two colors of brioche until finally, I'm going to flip it around here, Till finally you start gartering and then you will fade back through all six of your colors in the garter ridges. So I'm really happy. I hope this is coming up well on camera. It might be blown out a bit because of the lights, but it's a really subtle fade that I've got going on in this garter. So this is my color F. Then I have a color D in here. Wait, nope, E. And then I just started with my color D. So you will fade back through all six of your colors in reverse order as you reach the end of the shawl, and then which case you will end off, I believe, with your darkest color or color A, um, which is my, this dark purpley movie pink. Um, and here's the back. So I've got some blues in there, and this is, the blue is the color that I'm currently fading into on the garter. And then just some grays and some kind of succulent greens. So yeah, I am thoroughly enjoying this. The garter sections are long, um, but I feel like you fade so quickly that you don't ever really get bored. I'm never like, oh, can we just be done now? It's already like, oh, now it's time to add the next color. So it's really kept my attention while also being really mindless. Um, so I can just sit and do this while I'm watching TV. The progress keeper on here is from Hannah of the Corner of Craft, and that is where I was when I last shared it last week. So I have made a decent amount of progress since last week. And I will try, it's on, I mean, it's, it's on a 55 inch cable right now on my Chiaogu interchangeables, but it is still very bunched up because this thing, like I said, it's going to be massive. So I can't extend it too much because I don't want it to fall off these needles but I mean it's very large and in charge and I am enjoying it so so much so I'm really happy that I finally cast this on I was really hesitant because I knew going into it it was going to be a very large project um, if you guys have been Watching the podcast for a while, you might remember that I did cast on for my Find Your Fade, which is another very large Andrea Maury schlanket, um, a shawl blanket, because it's huge. I believe that's a seven color fade. I cast on for that. I made it through three color changes, and I just wasn't feeling it anymore. Um, the pattern was kind of a bit boring to me. It just wasn't necessarily what I was kneading at the time. I still think it's a great pattern and someday I would love to have a finished uh, find your fade. But at the time it just wasn't what I was looking for. And so I ended up, I was going to cast this on with those same colors, but then I got a wild hair and decided to dye my own fade, um, which I'm so happy I did because I went with the more pastel-y 
soft colors route, uh, assuming that it would then go with pretty much anything in my wardrobe. Um, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So brioche, uh, especially two color brioche is one of my absolute favorite things to knit. Um, it's so easy, you guys. If you have not knit brioche before, I highly recommend finding some YouTube videos. Um, let's see. The Unapologetic Knitter has some great ones. Woolen Vine has some great ones. Um, the Knitting Expat has some. Mina Phillip. Um, she has some two color brioche YouTube videos. So just honestly search YouTube for two color brioche and you'll come up with tons of videos on how to get started and makes it it makes it really easy and once you kind of get the gist of it, it's like riding a bike. So and it's just so squishy, you guys. Like I love look how squishy that is. I love brioche. Anything brioche steals my heart. Um I will knit brioche forever and always. So if you want to see the cakes in all of their glory, the different colors, then I will have a link to my Ravelry project page down below. You guys can pop over to that. I have a picture with all of the cakes lined up in their fade. Um, Cause I'm not, there's a lot of them. So I'm not gonna go through them all here and share them with you. Um, I will likely hold them up again once I'm all done and all the cakes or all the yarn has been broken. Um, so I'll share those again at the end. But if you're interested, there's a really great photo of all of them on Ravelry. So this is living in this wonderful bag, which is a fantastic beast bag, which my friend Amy made for me and gifted to me when I was at Vogue Knitting Live in Minneapolis. And it's just the perfect size. I've got six cakes of yarn in here, plus my giant with the fade. And to be honest, I will probably continue slamming my with the fade, packing it down in there. Um, so I don't anticipate growing out of this bag anytime soon. It is massive and it's exactly what was needed for this project. So that's all I'm going to share this week in, in terms of what I've been working on, because like I said, that has had the majority of my attention. I've still been knitting away on uh, my th three Irish girls rainbow socks. So those are still a work in progress. And I put in maybe about an inch of progress on my With Grace in Your Heart shawl, which is a pattern by Kay, who is the crazy sock lady and the designer behind Crazy Sock Lady Designs. Um, so that has been a really, really fun shawl to knit as well. I will likely share that next week. Um, I'll make some more progress on it and then share that with you guys. So I think I'm just going to jump right into some stash enhancement because I did receive some lovely stash enhancement this past week. The first thing I'm going to share with you guys is a potential spoiler. Um, so if you receive the yarn club from Hannah, who is uh, the lovely lady behind the corner of craft, um, you might not want to look. Um, but if you do want to see, I would love to share that with you. I am, I have been for the last, well, January and February, I have joined in her Nitical Roll Yarn Club. And if you're unfamiliar with Hannah's yarns, she, all, the, all of her colorways are um, inspired by everything Dungeons and Dragons, which I find just completely fascinating. And it warms my nerdy heart. And I love all of it. I love watching um, what she comes up for inspiration photos and what she names her colorways and then seeing them created on yarn is just too much fun. And when she decided to introduce a new yarn club this year, um, I had to jump on. So it is the Nitical Roll Yarn Club and that is a play off of Critical Roll, which is a podcast um, or a YouTube show where this group of people get together and play Dungeons and Dragons. And this is all I believe from, I want to say season one, which I've never watched. I have started watching season two. I'm still working my way through that. Um, so I'm not, I'm sorry, Hannah. <laughs> I'm not understanding a lot of the, the, the play on words or the the storylines behind the colorways but she does include which I think is fantastic she includes this little card where she explains what was happening in the episode what she was thinking when she dyed this and it has really helped because like I said I have not watched season one um 
but this this is great. I mean, I could see exactly what she was thinking with this little card she included. So um, the February's Nidical Roll Yarn Club is inspired by the much-loved bear trinket in episode 36, named Winter's Crest in Whitestone, Vox Machina, finds themselves faced with a pie-eating contest. Trinket is polymorphed into a bearded man and participates in the contest. She said, I imagine him covered in blueberry pie filling, feeling sorry for himself. And so this colorway is called Don't Be a Sad Bear, Be a Happy Bear. And can you guys not see that, like, the inspiration behind that? Does that not just scream bear covered in blueberry pie filling to you. I mean, I think she nailed it. So this is her sturdy DK base. Um, the last month and this month I received DK because my stash is sadly lacking in DK. I have so many skeins of sock yarn, so I really felt like I should add to my DK stash and then these could make some really fun um, hats and things like that or maybe put them together in something. So this is 100% superwash blue face luster and 100 grams and about 246 yards. And look how pretty that is. Isn't that just so fun? I love the browns and the blues and the purples. So I'm sorry, I hope I didn't spoil that for anyone, um, but I had to share. So there's her little card and she is the cornerofcraft.co.uk. And she is an amazing human being, and I love her. So, isn't that just so pretty? Look at it. <sighs> Hannah. Hannah rocks my life. The next thing I got um, in the mail, pick up the box here. I got a large box. <laughs> I did do a bit of shopping for me, but I also did a bit of shopping for my fiber share partner. Um, so I was just waiting on some of that to come in before I can ship it off to them. So they will be receiving it hopefully in the next week or so. Um, but I am a follower, a longtime follower of Emily with Wolfiend. And um, she lately has been posting a lot of beautiful photos on her Instagram of fiber that she is making for spinning and I feel like she might have known exactly what she was doing when she posted some of these things uh, because they immediately grabbed my attention they tugged at my heartstrings and before I even knew what happened I had already bought them so I am so excited though this was such like an impulse purchase but I am I had to have them in my life and I cannot wait Cannot wait to get them on my wheel. So it's going to crinkle a bit. I'm sorry. I will just pause and pull it out of the plastic. The first thing I ordered from her is a braid of merino, tessa silk, and gold stellina in the colorway glitter and silk. And it is four ounces. And you guys, oh my lanta. I hope the sparkle is picking up. Isn't that beautiful? So I saw it um, as soon as she posted it and just had to have it. This just speaks to my heart. These pinks with the gold and the sparkles. I just, I can't, I can't, I can't say no. So this is so soft and so squishy and so dreamy. This is definitely going to be the next step on my wheel. I do have uh, some fiber right now on my wheel that is a really bright, pretty rainbow colorway from Leon Alexander Yarns. So that has been really fun to spin up. And I, while I am really enjoying that, um, I am really happy to know that this is patiently waiting next in line. It's just so beautiful. And I am really excited that she's doing a lot more fibers. Um, and I have to say that they're a phenomenal price. Um, Emily, I feel like you can, this, it's just so beautiful. It's so worth, um, just more than what she's listing them as. Um, so yeah, I would, they're just, oh, they're beautiful. They're so well done. The colors, her eye for color is just 
amazing. So please run and check out her shop that is uh, Wolfiend on Etsy. I'll leave a link down below. So I had purchased that for me. I made another purchase from her shop for my fiber share partner. Um, and the next day or two days later, maybe she posted another photo on her Instagram feed when I was like, gosh, darn it. I have to have that too. <laughs> so I did wind up ordering uh, two of her mini bats. And she ended up just, which was great, she obviously hadn't sent out my first order, so she just dumped it all together, so I got it all at the same time. Um, but this is, she has been also doing some mini bats, which I think is fantastic. I love spinning from bats. Uh, this is Merino, Corydale, Firestar, Silk Noil, Mulberry Silk, Milk Silk, and Masham, and it is called Tiny Sweets. And this is 2.1 ounces. And then I got another one, which is the exact same thing with 2.2 ounces. So I have just over four ounces of this in bat form. And it's very much along the same lines as the braid, but it's got a lot of some silk bits, silk noil in there. Um, yeah, and like I said, it's in bat form instead of being in a, in a braid with the... Um, say comb top. I'm still learning my my words for spinning, but um, yeah. Look at how cute it is. So I did get two of these. Um, I just, I don't know, I love them. I love them so much. So please go check out her shop if you are a spinner. Um, even if you are not a spinner, she does, she also dyes yarn which she was so amazing in tossing in some extra goodies, which I will share with you. Um, Emily, you are just the best, my friend, but she, she knows my heart. And so she sent this along, <laughs> which is her faux lace colorway. And it is a very pale pink with just loads of speckles in there. Hopefully stop looking at my face, focus on those speckles. So yeah, this is on her 7525 sock and it is um, 463 yards for 100 grams and it is, like I said, faux lace. And it's just this really pretty pale, pale pink with loads of sparkle, or sparkle, speckles. Um, which this could not have come at a better time because I am thinking Someone I know is having a little girl in the next coming months, um, and it has been so long since there was a baby around, um, around me that I would feel like I could knit for. Um, I don't know that that's ever happened, to be honest. I mean, I'm sure I've known people that I'm like, yeah, I can knit them a baby hat, but you have to be really knit worthy. Um, if I'm gonna sit down and knit you a tiny baby sweater or something along those lines, because I am a selfish knitter. I've mentioned that previously. Um, but Christy, who has the Mama and Amance podcast, just finished a teensy tiny little, is it the vertebrae sweater? Um, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. She just knit one of those for someone she knows and so I was looking through pictures and these little tiny babies and their little tiny sweaters is the most adorable thing. While no, it did not make me feel like I needed to have another one, it made me feel like I needed to knit a sweater for someone else's baby. Um, so this could not have come at a better time because it is just the palest, delicate shade of pink. And so this may end up becoming a vertebrae sweater for a friend of mine who is having a little girl soon. So. Thank you, Emily. It's like you knew the stars aligned. Um, she also sent me some of her own hand spun, a little mini, which, oh, it's so great. I just, I sat and was looking at it for a good five, ten minutes the other day. Oh, hand spun to me is just so incredibly cool. 
And then she sent along a stitch marker and some David's tea because she is a fantastic human being and so sweet and so kind. Um, so thank you so much, Emily. Um, I'm really excited to have this fiber. Please stop making pretty pink bats because you're going to break me. Um, but yeah, if you do, I will continue ordering them and then I will, looking at my my fiber spinning stash over here is already exploding, but um, I can't resist. So definitely please go check out her shop um, if you are unfamiliar. She's been adding some amazing things to it recently, so definitely check it out. Another thing I picked up recently is not a physical item, but it is a pattern. And I wanted to share this because I don't always share pattern enhancements, stash library enhancements. I don't know. Um, but I feel like it's just as important. I've said this before. I feel like it's just as important to share with, um, with you guys the patterns that I am enhancing my library with um, to give you guys maybe some ideas of some new things that you were unfamiliar with. However, I don't feel like any of these things are things that you have not heard before. Um, because as we all know, I'm a bandwagoner. And so I did go ahead and purchase the, I'm going to show them on my phone. I'm sorry if it looks awful. I will just insert a photo. Um, I went ahead and ordered the Party Top by Abby Knits. And I believe Diane, the Suburban Stitcher, is making one of these. I want to say there's been quite a few people making these recently. Um, and I really am intrigued and I really want one. Um, there is some, I hope, there's some eyelet detail on the shoulder and the arm the sleeve, which is really cool. And I just love the way this fits. I feel like it'll be good on my body type. Um, I do have a rather long torso, but then very wide hips. Um, so I don't know. I've never worn a crop sweater like that. Um, so yeah, I'm intrigued. Also, I love the fact that it takes like less than three skeins of DK for my size, um, which is like nothing in terms of knitting a sweater. Three skeins of DK is so doable. And while we're um, showing things off in terms of that party top, I also wanted to share what I'm thinking for yarn. So I am thinking that I am going to be knitting it out of Madeline Tosh Twist DK in the Conference Call colorway. And it's just a really pretty, um, almost a cool gray with some just light blue speckling in there. So I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and order that, order three skeins of that for the party top. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll get, I'll get to cast that on soon. Another pattern that I went ahead and purchased this last week is the Fading Point Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. This is not a new one. It's been around for quite some time. It is a very, very large rectangular faded shawl. And um, I already have a five skein fade kit that I purchased from Long Dog Yarn. And I was kind of waffling back and forth between do I knit the starting point or the fading point with it? I knew I wanted to do one of those and I did add one of those to my make nine for 2019. Um, I think I finally decided, well, I know I finally decided and settled on the fading point. So that one will be cast on very soon. Um, I was planning on casting on this weekend. However, I know if I do, I will probably end up pushing my what the fade to the side because the cast on itis always gets me and I always fall in love with the new thing and forget about the old and I just I don't I don't want to give in and I don't want to give up on my what the fade so I may go ahead and kick the yarn up for that however I know that's just one step closer <laughs> It's like an addiction. I just keep like, how far can I push this before I just eventually topple over the edge? Um, it's close, you guys. It's close. I might, like I said, I might end up caking up the yarn this weekend and at least getting it ready. Um, I was hoping one of the things that I've been itching to cast on takes a pair of US 3s, which unfortunately are on my What the Fade. So that in my brain was like, ha, see, sucks to be you. You have to finish your What the Fade in order to use those 3s. 
Um, so I was kind of hoping that the fading point would be along those lines, but then I looked and it takes a US 5, which I definitely have free. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> wah wah. So, um, yes, look for that. Um, that might very well happen. And then the last pattern I wanted to share might be new to you, um, which was definitely new to me, but I ended up winning a pattern from Diane of the Suburban Stitcher. She had pulled my number out of her rainbow along thread for, uh, a giveaway, a pattern giveaway. So I was able to pick any of the patterns from... Yeah, I was able to pick any of the patterns from Mary Luca's Yarn uh, Ravelry store. And so I picked the Mount Airy socks. And they're just, they've got a really pretty, really pretty spiral. I don't know if those are pearls. Um, it's just got like a really cool texture that kind of spirals around the legs. So I did go ahead and say that those were the ones I would like um, and those were gifted to me straight away and I'm super excited to have um, another sock pattern and to be a winner of the rainbow along. So yeah, hopefully that's coming up, coming across okay, but super cool, just a fun texture. Um, I imagine it would be fairly mindless uh, to knit and would be easy to kind of keep track of where you're at um, so you don't get too lost, but um, yeah, so excited to have another sock pattern in my library. Um, in terms of shop news, there was no shop update this weekend. There is still quite a bit of things left in the shop if you are so interested in checking out what's happening over at Lofty Loops Yarns. Um, that is loftyloopsyarns.com. I still have some of my Halloween colorways or my old seasonal colorways are still under the seasonal tab. Those have all been marked down, um, so they're, they will stay marked down until, um, until they are purchased or until I decide to stash them for myself. Yeah, I'm really, I'm just going to be focusing on getting prepped and ready for the show in New York. Um, that means I will be going down my list of regular colorways and dyeing batches of each. Um, I am not sure yet whether or not I'm just going to do show prep or if I'm going to do... Um, normal updates and then just list everything and then pull down whatever is left um, before then. I may end up splitting it a bit so you may see some older colorways kind of pop into the shop uh, every now and again but so keep your eyes peeled for that as always if you want to know what's happening or what's heading to the shop you can sign up for my newsletter via the website um, and I always send out an email newsletter update uh, every at least a day or two before I add anything to the shop so you guys can see that and kind of see what's going in. And March Mystery Sock Club is up until March 10th, at which case that listing will come down and I will be dyeing those up and shipping them out. March is going to be very based on green. So if you're a green lover, there will be lots of green in this game. He did post an inspiration photo on Instagram if you wanna travel back through and find that. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, green, St. Patrick's Day is coming. Um, everything is green in March, I feel like. But I wanted to do something really fun, very reminiscent of spring, because like I said, <sighs> blizzard is coming. Um, and I just, I'm really excited to see green things sprouting in my yard again. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe this will give Mother Nature the little nudge, you know, she needs. Or it'll just continue to help my bubble of denial that I'm in. Um, so anyway, yes, check that out if you're interested. You can get that on Lofty Sock or Lofty Glitz, which is my Stellina base, and you can get it with or without a coordinating mini for heels and toes. So check it out. Um, otherwise, gosh, I honestly, I think that's about it this week. I Work had been pretty crazy this past week, so I felt like I was just, all the days just kind of zoomed on by. We did end up having a snow day in the middle of last week. Um, the kids were home from school for one day. And otherwise, yeah, just keeping up with work and then coming home and working on my What the Fade. My husband and I did end up watching Bodyguard on Netflix, which is a really good show, um, really intense show. Uh, that is with Rob, stars Rob Stark who I know his real name's not Rob Stark, it's Richard Madden. 
Um, but he plays a bodyguard to a secretary to the prime minister. I don't know British government. I'm sorry. Um, I wish I knew more about British government because I feel like I would have... I wouldn't have been so lost a lot of the time. Um, it was still a good show regardless of having no idea how British government works. Um, it was still very good. But I feel like it would have just elevated it a level if I kind of knew how all of these people and these groups tied together. However, very good. Um, we watched that and plowed through it rather quickly and now I'm sad that it's over. <sighs> such as such as the Netflix life. Um, what else did we watch? We watched Tag last night, which is the movie about the group of guys that started a game of tag when they were nine years old and now they're in their 30s, where it's been like, they're in their 40s, it's been 30 years that they've been playing tag. Um, that was really funny, surprisingly funny. We kind of went into it like, eh, this will be something to watch. Um, but I actually, I was really pleasantly surprised with how enjoy, uh, or how much I enjoyed that movie. So, it has John Hamm in it, who is just Dreamboat, and um, Nick Miller from New Girl, which I know his real name is not Nick Miller. This is how I refer to people. Um, <laughs> but Nick was in that movie, and Ed Helms is in that movie, and I don't know, it's just, it's it was funny. It was definitely worth a watch. It was kind of an odd group of guys, but I think they, um, I think they did a great job kind of playing off of each other, so. And I also started the Umbrella Academy last night. I watched the first episode after we finished that uh, movie, and I'm not totally hooked yet. However, I am willing to keep trying. I have heard really good things from a lot of people. A lot of people have specifically recommended it to me because they felt it had kind of a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe to it, which we all know I'm obsessed with Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, so I am still willing to give it a try, but after, maybe I was just tired, but after the first episode, I was like, eh, it's okay. Um, I do already have a favorite, though. I definitely love Klaus. I hope that I continue loving Klaus. Um, <laughs> but as soon, I think it was within seconds of seeing his character, I was like, oh, he's, he's my favorite. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I've heard really great things. And otherwise, yeah, like I said, we've just been hunkered down. It's been cold. It's been yucky. Um, so just working and coming home and Netflixing and knitting and being, just being lazy, kind of hibernating. So anyway, uh, next week is, I don't know if I'll be around to podcast next weekend. It is going to be my son's 15th birthday and he is hoping to have some friends over to celebrate, which means I will likely have a basement full of teenage boys, so Lord help me. Um, so if that's the case, I definitely won't have a quiet enough surrounding to record anything. Um, I may I may just need to find some earplugs, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know what 15-year-old boys do. I don't, I don't know that I want to know. <laughs> Um, it'll likely be a lot of video gaming and maybe we'll just do some pizza and stuff like that. So anyway, I will let you know, um, if that's the case, um, to not expect anything from me next week. Uh, but if not, I will definitely try to share with you, uh, what I work on over the next week. And I hope you guys are staying warm. I hope no one loses power. Looking at you, Christy, I will be so sad for you guys if you lose power. Um, just sounds awful. So definitely stay warm, do what you have to do, cozy up in all your knits, and enjoy your week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.